So we're back out in the spring malting barley here at Harper Toon on the 9th of June and it's about six weeks since we last did one of these video updates on the progress of the crop and since then things have, um, have been moving along okay. The, uh, the barley's been moving through the growth stages quite steadily and it's now at a phase that we call booting where the plants are just starting to extend upwards and we're just starting to see the very tips of the awns emerging through the top of the plant. And that's fairly typical of what we would expect it to be at, at this time of year. The weather today is, is pretty windy as you can see and, and that's been the case quite a lot over the last few weeks which has hampered us from getting out with the sprayer uh, at a time of year where it's quite critical to, to get some plant protection products on the crops. So that's been quite frustrating. We've had to um, try and work around it, either go out early in the morning or last thing at night when things are a bit calmer and, uh, and get the job done then. But we have managed to get onto the spring barley quite a timely manner. And uh, we've been through the crop once already with the sprayer. We put on a herbicide a couple of weeks ago just to take out what was quite a big flush of broadleaf weeds. And at the same time, we applied the first of two uh, protectant fungicide applications and uh, that's really just to try and help keep the crop clean and free of disease. Uh, if some of these diseases get into the crop early on it can be uh, quite damaging to yield. So looking at the plants at the moment everything looks to be fairly clean. There's very little evidence really of any of the main foliar diseases that we would maybe normally see in barley so that's good. What we can see though looking across the field there's um, the occasional plant which is just yellow on the tips of the leaves and I suspect that that's probably a yellow dwarf virus that's caused that. Uh, that that's a disease which is transmitted by aphids and what they do is they'll migrate into a field like this, they'll colonize and start to reproduce and then they'll transmit the disease onto the barley crops and so what you end up with is, uh, is plants like this which are typically yellow in the younger leaves here and um, in small patches like this it's not a huge concern I don't think it's, it's more of an aesthetic issue but if we were to start to see big patches in the field or, or whole fields as a worst case scenario then I'd be really concerned about that because it, it can be really damaging to yield and to quality uh, you start to get these stunted plants uh, and shriveled grains and it's not something that we can control with fungicides um, and insecticides to control the aphids can be quite hit or miss as well. So on the farm here what we're trying to do instead is encourage beneficial insects, um, things like ladybirds which uh, will naturally prey on aphids. So by creating habitats around the edge of the field like extended grass margins which we have on a lot of the fields just now, um, that hopefully encourages their populations to go up and they can help keep the aphid population uh, in check for us. Uh, but back to the short term, over the, the next couple of weeks what we need to do is get back into the field with, with the second fungicide application, uh, probably not too far away from now that the, the awns are coming out, so in the next week probably get back in and do that. Uh, and also we'll be out hand roguing the crops as well. Uh, we do that on all the spring barley and the other cereal ground each year if we get time. Just taking out mainly wild oats um, but also picking out uh, bromes or ryegrass if we have time to do that and, uh, and just try and keep their populations in check and, and don't allow them to spread too much so that we have to rely on chemicals to control them. And beyond that really it's just a case of monitoring the crop and, uh, and start the countdown to what is hopefully going to be a good harvest.